Live from San Jose, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering DataWorks Summit 2017. Brought to you by Hortonworks. Welcome back to theCUBE, day two of the DataWorks Summit. I'm Lisa Martin with my co-host, George Gilbert. We've had a great day and a half so far, learning a ton in this hyper growth, um, big data world meets IOT, machine learning, data science. George and I are excited to welcome our next guest. We have Josh Clark, the VP of Product Management from AtScale. Welcome, George. Welcome back. Thank you. And we have Prashanti Patty, the head of data engineering for GoDaddy. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Great to have you guys here. So, Wanted to kind of talk to you guys about, um, one, how you guys are working together, but two, also some of the trends that you guys are seeing. So, as we talked about the in, in the tech industry, it's two degrees of Kevin Bacon, right? You guys worked together back in the day at Yahoo. Talk to us about what you've both visualized and experienced in terms of the um, Hadoop adoption maturity cycle. Sure. You want to start, Josh? Yeah, I'll, I'll start in, uh and you can chime in and correct me. Uh, but yeah, as you mentioned, Prashanti and I worked together at Yahoo, which feels like a long time ago, uh, in a central data group. And we had two main jobs. The first job was collect all of the data from our ad systems, our audience systems, and stick that data into a Hadoop cluster. At the time, we were kind of doing it while Hadoop was being developed. Um, and the other thing that we did was we had to support a bunch of BI consumers. So we built cubes, we built data marts, we used MicroStrategy, Tableau, and I would say the experience here, there was a great experience with Hadoop in terms of the ability to have low cost storage, scale out data processing of all of what were really billions and billions, tens of billions of events a day. Uh, but when it came to BI, it felt like we were doing stuff the old way. Uh, yeah. We were moving data off cluster and making it small. In fact, yeah. you, you did a lot of that. Well, yeah, at the end of the day, we were using Hadoop as a staging layer, so we would process a whole bunch of data there, and then we would scale it back and move it into, again, relational stores or cubes, uh, because basically we couldn't uh, afford to give any accessibility to BI tools or to our end users uh, directly onto Hadoop. Um, yeah, so uh, while we really did a large scale uh, data processing in Hadoop layer, uh, we failed to uh, turn on the insights right there. Okay. Maybe there's a lesson in there for folks who you know, are getting slightly more mature versions of Hadoop now, but can learn from also some of the um, experiences you had. Were, you, were, were there issues in terms of clean, the, having clean and curated data? Were there issues for BI with performance and the lack, you know, the lack of proper file formats like Parquet? What was it that where you hit the wall? It was both. Uh, you have to remember this. We were probably one of the first teams to put a data warehouse on Hadoop. So we were dealing with big versions of like 0 0.5, 0 0.6. So we were putting a lot of demand on, on the tooling and the infrastructure. Uh, Hadoop was still in a very nascent stage at that time. Uh, so that was one. Uh, and I think a lot of the focus was on, hey, now we have the ability to do click stream analytics at scale, right? So, so we did a lot of the back end stuff, but the presentation is where uh, I think we struggled. So would that mean then that you did do, like the idea is that you could do full resolution without sampling on the back end, and then you would extract and presumably sort of denormal, denormalize so that you could es essentially run data marts for subject matter, you know, yeah. interests. Yeah. yeah, and that's exactly what we did is we mm -hmm. took all of this big data, but to make it work for BI, which were two things. One was performance, it was really can you get an interactive query and a response time, and the other thing was the interface. Can a Tableau user connect and understand what they're looking at? Uh, you had to make the data small again. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was actually the genesis of AtScale, which is where I am today, was we were frustrated with this big data platform and having to then make the data small again uh, in order to support BI. That's a great transition, Josh. Let's actually talk about at scale. You guys saw BI on Hadoop as this big white space. How have you succeeded there? And then let's talk about what, what GoDaddy is doing with at scale and, and big data. Yeah, I think that we definitely learned, we took the learnings from our experience at Yahoo and we 
we really thought about if we were to start from scratch and solve the problem the way we wanted it to be solved, what would that system look like? And it was a few things. One was an interface that worked for BI. Uh, I don't want to date myself, but my experience in the software space started with OLAP. And uh, I can tell you OLAP isn't dead. When you go and talk to an enterprise, a Fortune 1000 enterprise, and you talk about OLAP, that's, what they, that's how they think. They think in terms of measures and dimensions and hierarchies. So one important thing for us was to project an OLAP interface on top of data that's Hadoop native. It's Hive tables, Parquet, ORC, you, you, you kind of talk about all of the, the mess that may sit underneath the covers. So one thing was projecting that interface. Uh, the other thing was delivering performance. So we've invested a lot in using the Hadoop cluster natively to deliver performant queries. We do this by creating aggregate tables and summary tables and being smart about how we route queries. But we've done it in a way that makes a Hadoop admin very happy. You don't have to buy a bunch of at scale servers in addition to your Hadoop cluster, we scale the way the Hadoop cluster scales. Uh, so we don't require separate technology. So we fit really nicely into that Hadoop, Hadoop ecosystem. So how do you make, so making the Hadoop admin happy is a good thing. How yes. do you make the business user happy who, who needs now, as we were hearing yesterday, to, to kind of merge more with the data science folks to un, be able to understand or even have the chance to articulate these are the business outcomes we want to look for or we want to see. How do you guys, on maybe under the hood, if you will, at that scale, make the business guys and gals happy? Yeah, I'll, provide, I'll share my opinion and then Prashanti can comment on, uh, on her experience, but uh, as I mentioned before, the business users want an interface that's simple to use. Uh, and so that's one thing we do is we give them uh, the ability to just look at measures and dimensions. If I'm a business, I grew up using Excel to do my analysis. The thing I like most as an analyst is a big fat wide table. And so that's what we make an underlying Hadoop cluster and what could be tens or hundreds of tables look like a single big fat wide table for a data analyst. You talk to a data scientist, you talk to a business analyst, that's the way they want to view the world. Uh, so that's one thing we do. And then we give them response times that are fast. We give them interactivity uh, so that you can really quickly start to get a sense of the shape of the data. And then allow allowing them to get that time to value. Yes. Yeah, I can imagine. Just to follow up on that, when when you have to prepare the aggregates, essentially like the cubes, instead of you know the old BI tools running on a data mark, um, what is the additional latency that's required from data coming fresh into the data lake and then transforming it into something that's consumption ready for the business user? Yeah, I think I can take that. Yeah. So uh, again, if you look at the last 10 years, um, in the in the initial period, certainly at Yahoo, we just uh, throw engineering resources at that problem, right? So we had teams dedicated to like building this aggregates, but the whole premise of Hadoop was the ability to do unstructured uh, optimizations, and by having a team, uh, you know, find out the new data uh, coming in and then integrating that into your pipeline, and so we were adding a lot of latency. And uh, so we needed to figure out uh, how we can do this uh, in a more uh, seamless way, in a more uh, real-time uh, way, um, and get the you know the real premise of Hadoop, uh, you know, get it at the end, uh, hands of uh, our business users. I mean, I, I think that's where uh, uh, at scale is doing a lot of the uh, good work uh, in terms of. Uh, uh, you know, dynamically being able to create uh, aggregates based on the design that uh, you put in the uh, in their queue. Um, so uh, we are uh, starting to work with them on our uh, implementation. Uh, we are looking forward to the results. Tell us a little bit more about what you're looking to achieve. So GoDaddy is a customer of that scale. Tell us a little bit more about that. What what are you looking to build together, and kind of where are you in that journey right now? Yeah. So um, uh, the main goal for us is to move beyond uh, predefined models, uh, dashboards and reports, right? Uh, so we want to be more agile with our schema changes. Uh, time to market uh, is one. Uh, and uh, performance, uh, right? Uh, uh, ability to put uh, BI tools directly on top of Hadoop uh, is one. And uh, also to, uh, you know, push as much of the semantics uh, as possible down uh, into the Hadoop layer. Uh, so those are the things that we are looking to do. So that sounds like um, classic business intelligence components, but sort of rethought for a big data era. 
Um, I love that quote, I'm going to yes. steal it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what we are trying to do. But that's also, some of the things you mentioned are, are non-trivial where, you know, you want to have, there's, it, there's time goes into the pre-processing of data so that it's consumable, but you also want it to be dynamic, which is sort of a trade-off, which means, you know, that takes time. So is that a is that um, sort of a set of requirements, a wish list for um, for at scale, or is that uh, you know something that you're building on your own? Um, we uh, I think there's a lot happening in that uh, space. Uh, uh, they are one of the first people to come out with a product uh, uh, which was which is solving a real problem that we tried to solve for a long time. Uh, and uh, I think uh, as we start using them more and more, we'll be sh surely pushing them uh, to bring in uh, uh, more features. Uh, uh, I think uh, you know the, the algorithm that they have to uh, dynamically generate the uh, aggregates uh, is something that uh, we are uh, giving quite a lot of feedback to them on. One of our last guest um, from Pentaho was talking about there was um, in her keynote today, the quote that from I think McKinsey report that said like 40% of um, machine learning data is either not fully exploited or not used at all. So tell us kind of where where is Big Daddy um, regarding machine learning? What are you seeing? What are you seeing at at scale? And how are you guys going to work together to maybe um, venture into that frontier? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the key requirements uh, we are placing on our uh, data scientists is uh, not only do you have to be very good at uh, you know your 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 uh, data science job, you have to be a very good programmer too to make use of uh, uh, the big data technologies. So, and we are seeing some interesting developments, like very uh, workload specific uh, engines coming into the market now uh, for search, for graph, for machine learning as well. Um, and, uh, uh, and which 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 is supposed to give uh, you know the, the tools right into the hands of uh, data scientists. Um, I personally haven't uh, worked with them uh, to be able to comment, but I do think that the next uh, realm on uh, big data is this workload specific engines uh, uh, coming on top of uh, Hadoop uh, and and realizing more of the insights uh, for the end users. Just curious, can you elaborate a little more on those workload specific engines? I, I mean, that's, that sounds rather intriguing. Well, uh, I think uh, uh, interactive, uh, uh, in, uh, interacting with uh, Hadoop uh, yeah. on a real time uh, basis, uh, we, we see uh, you know, search based engines like Elasticsearch, uh, uh, Solar, L, and there is also Droid. Uh, um, uh, at Yahoo, uh, we, uh, we, we were quite a big shop of uh, Druid actually, and we were using it as an interactive query layer uh, directly with our applications, BI applications. Uh, these are JavaScript based uh, BI applications uh, and uh, uh, Hadoop. Uh, so I think there are quite a few means uh, to realize uh, uh, insights uh, from Hadoop now, uh, and that's the space where I see you know, workload specific engines coming in. And you mentioned uh, earlier before we started that you were using Ma Mahout, presumably for machine learning. And uh, I guess I thought the center of gravity for that type of analytics has moved to, to Spark. And uh, you haven't mentioned Spark yet. Uh, I'm, uh, we are not using uh, Mahout. Uh, uh -huh. I'm, I'm, I mentioned it uh, as something that's in that uh, space. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, Spark uh, is pretty interesting. Um, you know, it, it, it's uh, Spark SQL. Uh, doing ETL with Spark as well as using Spark uh, SQL for uh, queries uh, uh, is uh, something that looks very, very promising lately. Quick question for you um, on, from a business perspective. So you're the head of engineering at GoDaddy. How do you interact with your business users, um, the C-suite for example, where data science, machine learning, they understand we have to have, we're, they're embracing Hadoop more and more. They need to really uh, embracing big data and leveraging Hadoop as, as an enabler. What's the conversation like or maybe even um, the, the influence of, of the GoDaddy business C-suite on engineering? How do you guys work collaboratively? 
Yeah. Um, so uh, we do have like a you know a very regular stakeholder meeting, um, and, and these are business stakeholders. Uh, so we have representatives from our marketing teams, finance, uh, product teams, uh, uh, and uh, data science uh, team. We consider data science as one of our customers. Um, and uh, we take uh, requirements from them, we give them uh, uh, you know, peek into the work we are doing. Uh, we also let them be part of our agile team so that uh, at the, you know, when we have something uh, uh, released, uh, they are the first ones looking at it uh, and testing it. Uh, so they're very much part of the process. Um, I don't think uh, you know, we can afford to just sit back and work on this uh, monolithic uh, you know, data warehouse uh, and at the end of the day say, hey, here's what uh, we have built and ask them to go uh, get the insights from it. Um, so it, it, it's a very agile process and they are very much part of it. One last question for you, uh, sorry George, is you guys mentioned you're, you're sort of early in your partnership, unless I misunderstood. Yep. What have you achieved, what have, has that skill helped GoDaddy achieve so far and what are your expectations, say, the next six months? Um, we want the world. <laughs> 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 <Scale>. Just that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, the premise is, I mean, um, so Josh and I were part of the same team at Yahoo uh, where we face the problems that at scale is trying to solve. Uh, so the premise of, uh, you know, being able to solve those problems, uh, which is uh, like their name, um, basically delivering data at scale. Uh, that's the premise that I'm very much looking forward to from them. Well, excellent. Well, we want to thank you both for joining us on theCUBE. We wish you the best of luck in, in attaining the world. There we go. <laughs> thank you. Excellent, guys. Josh Clark, thank you so much. for My pleasure. Thank you for being on theCUBE for the first time. No problem. You've been watching theCUBE live at the day two of the DataWorks Summit. For my co-host, George Gilbert, I'm Lisa Martin. Stick around, guys. We'll be right back.